Bob Woodard of the Dare County Commission. Bob has had a distinguished, and continues to have, a distinguished professional career helping businesses and their employees as Vice President of Town Insurance. He serves his clients in all of Eastern North Carolina. Bob also has a second full-time day-night job in public service. Uh, his role in public service includes serving on the Deer County Commission since 2012. He's currently serving his sixth year as chairman. He represents the Deer County Board of Commissioners on a number of boards and committees, including the Deer County Health and Human Services Board, trustees for the College of the Albemarle, chairman of the Deer County Control Group, Roanoke Island Historical Association, and the Deer County Bombing Range Advisory Council. Prior to his election to the Dare County Board of Commissioners, he served as Mayor Pro Town of Kill Devil Hills from 2006 to 2011. And he was also a Town of Kill Devil Hills Commissioner from 1999 to 2001. He is a former chairman of the Outer Banks Visitors Bureau. And somehow, with all this, Bob still has time to have a wife, Linda, and two sons and four grandchildren. <laughs> This year's address is a very special one because we are marking the 150th anniversary of Dare County. And please note that Bob is dressed in period peace to set the mood for the presentation. It's my pleasure to introduce Bob Wood. I've got to recognize some special people this morning. Um, first being uh, Representative Haney. Um, I, tell, I can't say how much uh, it means to me to have you here this morning, Representative Haney, because you have partnered with us and done a fantastic job for Derek Kelly, and I couldn't thank you enough. I did tell him earlier today that you can borrow this city and if you got to wear those patent leather shoes, man. <laughs> Representative Haney, thank you for being here. Thank you. I'm honored to be in the insurance business for over 45 years. I've, I've retired from the uh, third largest insurance broker in the entire world, Willis, in 2011. And I'm now proud to, I went to work the very next day uh, after talking with Bob Ashton, who is president of Town Bank. And um, I'm, I'm part of uh, Town Bank. I'm a subsidiary of Town Bank, Town Insurance. I'm very, very honored to have with me this morning uh, the president and CEO of Town Insurance, Mr. Dudley Fulton from Virginia Beach. It Dudley allows me to do this because town believes in giving back to their community. We give over $3 million back to the community every year, and, and, uh, and Dudley allows me to do this. He's also hasn't put much pressure on me because, uh, number one, I'm, supposed to, I'm, I'm, I'm responsible for my class, but I'm also responsible for uh, new business, but in the last few years, my new business, John, hadn't been quite that well, so Dudley's been very patient with me. <laughs> certainly, certainly last but not least. I'm getting a little emotional here, excuse me. I'm sorry, I can't help it. My wife is unbelievable. We've been married 28 years. She never, ever, never says, Bob, you can't go to this meeting. You can't do that. You can't do this. Instead, she is 100% behind every single thing that I do for town bank and that I do for this county. Politics. <laughs> Literally hates politics. 150 years ago, 1870, 
North Carolina General Assembly voted to take parts of Purita, hide in Terrell County, a new county, to make them a new county. They named it Dare County in memory of guess who? Virginia Tech. The first child born to English parents in the new world. Check this out, 150 years ago. Oh, let me back, back up. I'll get it right. Total population, 2,800 20, folks. 1870 census back then. Roanoke Island and the, and the beach area was part of Currington County back then. Our southern coast, including Hatteras, was part of Pine County. Mainland was part of Turtle County. Why did they create this important government function? Why did they do that? Because it got government closer to the people. People needed to be able to rack, work with, with one another locally to do that instead of having to go all the way to Raleigh or to D.C. And it's been said numerous times, nothing ever seems to get done in D.C. <laughs> I was just there last week, and trust me, they only work two and a half days a week. <laughs> True. And some have, some have said the same thing, Representative Haney, about Raleigh, but I know that's the <coughs> thing. You guys are working on I'd like to introduce some other special people. I could not do, Gail, what I'm able to do for this county without these gentlemen that I'm about to introduce. I have a vice chairman, Wiley Overman, who is unfortunately out of town today. He, uh, he had a prior commitment. But I've got guys on this board that give every single day of their life, every single week. And I'll start with Jim Tobin, who's sitting up front. Jim, stand up and stay standing up, please, if you will. Jim Tobin. Next to him, that sits next to him on our board, probably one of the most unbelievable financial gurus that I've ever known in my entire life other than Dave, the finance director, is Rob Ross. Rob. Next to Rob is another fine gentleman that I've had the pleasure to work with over the years. But really, really, nobody, nobody works any harder than this gentleman for our fishing industry in that steam house. I mentioned Wally, he's out of town. Next to Wally, the young guy on the board. <laughs> Kenny Harper, great guy. You ever want to have a friend in, in, in this gentleman? I, he just got a fantastic personality, just works his butt off. And that's an urban basin. <coughs> and I don't do this save last. Well, I did. I saved the best for last. <laughs> Danny Kelt. Stand up, Danny. I'm back here, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody, I don't think in modern times, has worked any harder than that gentleman to have his eye. Really worked extremely hard. Thank you, gentlemen, for what you do today. <laughs> Our schools. I was at the board education meeting last night with this gentleman and be fast night. I can't say at the party. I'm not leaving you out, Mark. <laughs> I can't thank y'all enough. For the relationship that we've had, we started a five on five a few years ago, and we worked really, really close. Nobody, nobody in this entire state has any closer relationship with their Board of Education, the Dare County Board, and Dare County Board of Education. We will go the extra mile, and we have proven that to this community and to that board. Twenty-four million dollars of the county's budget some 21.3% uh, of our budget goes to fund our schools. And we'll continue to do that. In addition to that, 
at $1.3 million in capital improvements. Uh, HVAC systems, gym floors, what else, John? Help me out. Roofs, all of that. We continue to support our kids and our school system. You may recognize this building, on Roto Garden, the Twyford. County manager wanted to save it for maybe potential growth in, in our county and employment. I said, no, time now. Time now. Dual enrollment. If we're going to do what we're going to do in Manny uh, for COA, we need that building for dual enrollment. We are kicking butt with dual enrollment. In 2018 and 2019, 684 courses were completed, saving $174 million in tuition by having dual enrollment. Tim Sweeney, watch you wait when you see this next one. 56% up. Give me five, Tim. Give me five. We're up 56%. I like to think I had something to do with it, Tim, as well as you, because you've been all the way, all the through county, and I have. I did my 26th presentation yesterday at the COA Foundation Board promoting COA and what we're about to do in Manio. This is incredible test for our kids. Nothing gets any better than this. It's just unbelievable. First time ever with respects to dual enrollment, we had a senior from Manio High School, we had a senior from K. Patterson High School, and a senior from First Flight walk across the stage, Sheriff, they walked across the stage, they were handed a high school diploma and an associate's degree from COA. Unbelievable. Well, we're going to get you enrolled so you can get one. Here we go. Everybody recognizes this? Campus in Manio. Guess what? It is getting ready to be better. It's getting ready to be better. Betty, you know it is. You know it is because you sit on that board in Manio, and we're getting ready to talk to them folks tonight. But look what our board of directors, county board of commissioners have done, Ken. Look at this. Couldn't beat it. Fourteen million dollars to build a new facility, 3,500 plus square feet flex space. Danny Couch, he chaired this task force for me. Did a phenomenal job with the citizens in DARE working on that task force to talk about um, curriculum. Al, I'm glad to see you got your, your signature hat on again today, bro. He looks great. I'd love to see that. Worked very hard to make that happen. Danny, I can't thank you enough. But $14, $14 million. We are in the stages now with our architect to, uh, to do that. We will hopefully, uh, sometime February, we will be tearing down all of these old buildings over there on campus and we'll be new, building the new, new uh, facility uh, in Manio. Let's go, back, let's go back to this one more time. I forgot to tell you something about this. We... We are excited to build this new facility. In addition to that, Courtney, our board also put another $10 million, 22, 23, for additional space over there. 400, 400 uh, facility uh, auditorium, possibly, uh, a 6,000 square foot. We've got all that room on that property to do this for urgent care. Number three in the state, COA and nursing, we want to make it number one. If we do that, if we partner, Tess, with, the, with your board in the hospital, we can make that happen. Unbelievable. Let's go back. Uh, I said I'd do a little bit of history today. Let's go back. Uh, 69, last year we celebrated 50 years of COA in Dare County. They had 23 kids enrolled in, uh, at, at uh, COA 
uh, back in 1969 and 69. Today, one-third of the, of the uh, kids that go to COA, one-third of them, 595 kids out of 2,600 are from Dare County. Or from Dare County. 595 kids. That's phenomenal. We want to give every single kid in Dare County that graduates an opportunity to go to COA. Artie, Artie's the vice chair of, C of trustees. Artie went to COA. Dr. Farley went to a community college. You know? I went to Lewisburg Junior College. They asked me to take a sabbatical, doctor. <laughs> I won't ask six months. And they asked me to take a sabbatical. <laughs> Malcolm, well, guess what? When I got home, I had a big letter in the mail from Linda Johnson. He needed my services. Oh. You talk about puckering. I straightened my act up, I can tell you that. In addition to that, this board just tried to continue to outpace itself. $250,000 that we're putting in for scholarships for our seniors to go to college. Additional $250,000. First priority, anybody enrolled full-time, 12 hours or more, COA, Dare County, campus, and curriculum workforce development. Second priority, students enrolled in curriculum workforce development programs at any other COA campus. Guys, it don't get any better than this. Carl, thank you so much for this outfit, but God help me, man, I'm, I'm, I'm sweating up a storm. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't know how those guys did this. You know, the, the material's so thick. I'm upstairs, Carl polishing these shoes yesterday. And my wife looks at me and says, what in the devil are you doing? It looked like they come out of a potato bin. <laughs> and she says, Bob, that's how they, they didn't have sidewalks and streets back then. That's how they walked down the street. That's why the shoes are dirty. I couldn't do it, man. I had to polish them bad. <laughs> <That's> absolutely right. <laughs> Check this out, guys. And I've done 26 of these about COA. When I finish, Mike, I say, I don't want a penny from you. I don't want you to do anything. What I want you to do is go around this county and tell the parents how wonderful this is and what's, what Dare County is doing for their, our seniors in, CO, in Dare County. Check this out. An associate's degree at COA, $6,500. Go to ECU, $37. 43,000 state. I don't know what the heck's wrong with state, uh, Tommy Fortry, but you're going to need to get them on the board. <laughs> and then 34, 38 at UNC Wilmington, 34 at Appalachian State. Now you say, wait a minute, Bob. Uh, wait a minute. They got room and board. You don't have that at COA. Well, take the room and board out of these. You're still $17,000 difference, 18, 20, whatever. It's huge, guys. I tell the folks out there, 68% of every single student that graduates in the United States of America has a loan to the tune of almost $750 a year. It's 6% 10-year loan. Who in the world can graduate from college, don't have a job bill, and got a $750 bill? How, how can they do it? That's why we need to get our kids at COA. Regional Airport. Commissioner Vice Chairman Overman sits on that board. No disrespect, Bobby, to Curry Tuck. They're taking our business, guys. We need to expand our airport. We need to do that. Well, we gave you a county. <laughs> I told him to say that. $77 million impact right now in Dare County. 
they did a, they did a study if we were to expand already the airport property and do some things over there, that it would, it would increase our uh, annual impact in Dare County to about $116 million. First time, guys, first time ever, air traffic controller from May 24 to September 3rd this past year from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. every single day of the week. First time. We'll do that. Airport will do that again next year. Huge impact. Huge impact in there. Dave Alec, here's your home in 1932. <laughs> One ingress and egress out of there, Dave. You know? Um, and then I, I'd be remiss if I, if I didn't tell you how uh, we have the same relationship with Superintendent Halleck we do. It's, it's incredible. Uh, you know, I don't, I'll say this anywhere, anytime, any day. Uh, serving on our uh, Board of Commissioners and even when I was in Kill Devil Hills, we never had a superintendent that we could work with as close as we work with Dave Halleck. Uh, how many of you know this gentleman, Ray Beecham? You know this gentleman? Kitty Hawk Kid. World War II. Our folks in Dare County worked hard and supported this country, just like the Kitty Hawk Kid. He shot down two Japanese fighter planes during the South Pacific. His squadron shot down 154 planes during 76 days of the South Pacific. While they were patrol patrolling out there, the United States of America never lost or never hit uh, one of their aircrafts or, or destroyers were ever hit because of these gentlemen. And I'll argue to the cows come home, Jack, greatest generation. My dad was part of it. Talk about transportation. You know, we've got another vital partner in our um, NCDOT. I was hoping Jerry Jennings might be here this, this morning or Alan Moran, but our representative on that, on that transportation board. We've got a great relationship with those guys. We really, really work hard with them. They, $2 million to keep sand off of 12 so our residents on Hatteras Island could get back and forth from the mainland to Hatteras Island. Two million dollars, Beth. You know it all full well, as many years as you've had to travel it. You know it full well. Unbelievable relationship we have. Let's talk about what's happened. Bridge projects in Dare County, the Mark Bass Knight Bridge, just, just did it in February of last year, 2.8 miles. Yeah, I like to froze my butt off while the rest of the commissioners rode in a van across the bridge. <laughs> All of them said, yeah, Bob, we're going to walk, so I start walking. I look behind me, I ain't seen the first commissioner. <laughs> Thank heavens Dave Halleck was with me. Lifespan 100 years. 1963. $4 million, Rob, to build that. $4 million. We finished last year, Trey, Troy, $252 million, lifespan 100 years. You know what the lifespan of that was? 30 years. We finished, we, we put the new Bass Night Bridge up after 56 years of that being there. 56 years. So, took us 30 years to do it. You do the math. What do you think it would have cost 30 years ago? It sure wouldn't have cost $252 million, would it? Here we go. This is the new norm, folks, on Harris, once you cross the Bass Knight Bridge, unfortunately. I don't think we've seen the last bridge, because we've got some hot spots. NC-12 Rodanthe Bridge is due to be completed late 2020, or maybe 2021, early 2021. 2.4 miles, 143 million dollars. Um, Beth, I think it's what, babe, 30 percent complete now, somewhere in that neighborhood, about 30 percent complete. 
as I said, I don't think we've seen the last of bridges. Uh, this one here, um, I'm trying to look around the room, and the only person I know that probably was went across that thing was Jack McCombs over here. But uh, I did as a kid at age 10 years old in 1955. This is what we'd, my parents would bring me down to the Outer Banks and we'd cross this bridge. Birthplace of a nation, birthplace of aviation. How many of you went across that bridge? Raise your hand. Tim, Tim's been across it. Tim, the, the bridge won't that high off the water. The bridge is a lot higher than that now. I used to have nightmares coming across that bridge with my parents. Oh my God, the t water's gonna come up. We ain't gonna be able to see the bridge. We ain't gonna be able to go over. But that's what happened. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about another transportation issue for our mariners. Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. We celebrated the 20th anniversary this past year. 2,900 2, feet moved in 23 days. And that's why they told me, Charlie, at, 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 at Lewisburg College to take a sabbatical. If you do the math, I think it works out to 126 feet or 129 feet a day. But y'all might want to check my math. But um, another, another great opportunity to uh, see that happen. We had a great day. It was great to uh, do that. Let's go back. Here's a photo of 1890. 1890. How many of you know that within a span of about 20 some years, the Mariners couldn't see this? It wasn't tall enough. They actually had to add another 60 feet to that. How many of y'all know that? Come on, history. Wait. Hey, where's the history teacher from, from the schools this morning? <laughs> Teach it. Well, ain't it? They ain't teaching Dare County history. <laughs> Jim Tobin. What year are we in the task force? Six? Five? Six. Our board approved the uh, organizational task force six years ago. Jim's been the chair ever since. This record is incredible to take that committee from six years to what he has done in six years to do a public-private partnership to build a bridge so that we can keep Oregon Inlet and Hatteras Inlet open. Phenomenal accomplishment, Jim, in, ten, in six years. Unbelievable. Where are we? we? We're in the final design now. It's similar to the Murden. That picture on the screen is the Murden. It's going to be similar to that, the dredge. It'll have 500 cubic yards of capacity. First of its kind in the history of the state of North Carolina. Am I right, Representative Haney? Here we go again. We continue. As I said this earlier today, nobody's worked any harder than Commissioner House to support our working watermen. Steve, this past year, came to the board and said, guys, we need to reorganize the Working Waterman Commission. Single-handedly, he did this. He got the folks to serve on that board, a variety of folks, and do that. Steve, thank you for what you do for our fishermen. Our board approved eight resolutions opposing harmful regulations to legislature. I, I don't know what it's with, I don't know what's with the legislature. They, they want to do away with our fishermen. I, I mean, it's incredible. It's incredible. That, I mean, that's our heritage. That's our history. That's how we eat. Nobody eats any better seafood than we do on the Outer Banks. Commission hosted North Carolina Division of Marine Fisheries Director at its meeting on Harris Island in August. I'm anxious to see what, what, we, what becomes of that, and Steve will keep us posted. And then we hosted a marine fisheries scoping meeting in, on the Southern Frowner Amendment in Manio in, in this past December. Is that Brownie Douglas right there? <laughs> huh? Wan Chi Shed Fishing, 1935. 
That's how we got seafood to market back then. We packed it in salt. Brown, did you see that? No, well, stand up. <laughs> stand up. I asked, I, I asked him, I said, is that you right there? That's how we got fish to market back then. We packed it in salt, and we put it in boxes, and we shipped it north. That's how we did things back in 1935. I could have sworn that was you, though, Brownie. I feel like that. <laughs> <laughs> health care. Our, our Health and Human Services Director, Sheila Davis, is here today. Sheila's department has done phenomenal work in the county. Our board is dedicated to providing affordable health care in Dare County. Opened a new Nags Head location this past year. Care management for at-risk children. We opened that in Kitty Hawk, and we have that in Kitty Hawk and Kill Devil Hills. That's Surf Pediatrics and Medicine. This is incredible right here. Our board stepped up to the plate. We have, and along with Sheila and her department, telepsychiatry. We've accessed uh, access avail have access available to, for telepsychiatry for our children and families in Dare County. We, we helped 117 kids last year, 117 children. Saving Lives Task Force. About two and a half years ago, Vice Chairman uh, Wally Overman uh, formalized this with key, key players in, in Dare County. Sheila's a part of that. Uh, I mean, this is incredible. We're safeguarding our citizens on opioid crisis. Commissioner Bateman, I teased him a little, bit, a little bit ago about being the new kid on the block. Nobody's any more committed to this than this gentleman. Irvin was instrumental, catastrophic, in a, helping us, the board, understand that we needed a recovery court. And the board stepped up to the plate at Irvin's recommendation and provided $125,000 for individual treatment plans. The Saving Lives response team uh, exp was expanded countywide, and the team responds to overdose victims and their families, uh, providing connections and available resources for programs in it to overcome substance abuse in Dare County. Let's go back. Look at what the board dealt with in 1988. They put up signs. Well, we put a task force together. We're tackling it. And that was fine back then. And they put up signs, Alligator River, Wright Memorial Bridge, Harris and Okokroke, uh, you know, declaring a, some, a war on drugs. And they worked hard to uh, let the citizens know that, that they were doing everything they could to, to, uh, to um, taught this. I think the county has taken the lead when it comes to essential housing. And about two years ago, I said I would never use that word affordable again, but I, I'm, I'm saying it because that's what, we, that's what I'm calling is essential housing. Uh, we've taken the lead, and we're trying to encourage our six municipalities to do the same. We held a workshop for an essential, an essential housing this past September. Um, we approved the CUP for cluster home developments in Avon and Rodanthe. We approved zoning amendments. All these zoning amendments we approved would help essential housing expand cluster home developments, zoning districts, educate, uh, educational housing alternatives, conditional use in subdivisions, uh, workforce housing units, uh, and then Several of us, but majority of us, in October went to an, an affordable housing conference in Raleigh. Um, we got, David, we got zero out of that. I mean zero. What we did get was contacts. Commissioner Ross, Vice Chairman Overman, our county manager made contacts. And we made some strong contacts there. They, they went back to Raleigh to talk to the uh, School of Government, and we now have a contract with them, an agreement, the UNC School of Government to work with Dow County on this initiative. We're hoping to be able to do something in Manio and Bowser Town, and I'm told that we can do something to the tune of 
eight to nine hundred dollars a month. We're holding them to it, aren't we, Rob? That is what I call J affordable housing. Fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred dollars a month is not affordable housing for some of our folks here in Dare County. It's, 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 it's just, Kenny, it's just not going to happen unless your bank's willing to subsidize the rest of it. I got a card. Okay. <laughs> Our board, 24-7 via phone, via email. If you don't believe me, you try it. Text me at 2 o'clock in the morning. If you don't, I promise you, within 10 minutes, you'll have an answer. Is that not right, Dorothy? Okay. Same thing with the rest of our board. I promise you that. We're committed. We'll continue to be committed. In January 2019, we voted to allow golf carts in Martins Point and on specific streets in Mans Harbor. Now, I don't, don't ask me why specific streets in Man's Harbor, but we did. But anyhow, we'll have to ask the sheriff about that. But we did that. May 2019, we denied a CUP to extend the concrete plan hours in Rodanthe to 3 a.m. Now, some would say we don't listen to our citizens in, in, on Harris Island. That is not true. We listened to the citizens on Hatteras Island, and they're the ones that asked us not to let this happen. And we didn't. Three o'clock in the morning, making concrete so that they could pour for the bridge. It was critical, but, but we, we, we couldn't do that to our citizens. For people that have to work in the morning, Lorelei, <clears throat> they, they go to work a lot earlier than you do. <laughs> June of 19, we attended a planning board meeting and uh, that was related to zoning uh, amendments on Harris Island. And we were, and we're working on those. We continued in September. We held meetings to discuss results of the uh, island drainage problem, Roanoke Island drainage problem that we had in 2018, flooding about in um, the northern part of the, the Manio. Once again, we don't do anything. Within two, what is it, two days, three days, Steve, Jim, we provided $50,000 to bring in water trucks from Virginia to pump those properties, people's properties in Manio. We step up to the plate every time we're asked to do something. We're now taking it to the next level. We did a $50,000 study with NCDOT. We've gotten back uh, three, uh, three um, um, uh, options for us to do. We're exploring that with those folks on Roanoke Island to try to do something in a CIP, a capital improvement project, moving down the road to try to make these things uh, go away to help our residents there never be flooded again, hopefully. In 2019, October, work, we work with property owners uh, to extend the water supply system to 24 properties and Leslie Lane in Avon. October again, we hosted the North Carolina Department of Insurance. The deputy commissioner was here, and we had conversations on property insurance. We continue. I've been to, I've been to Raleigh a number of times to uh, lobby on our, on our behalf to keep our rates down in Dare County, to keep our rates down in Dare, and we'll continue to do that. And, and I said, look, if you're going to have public hearings, have them in Dare County. So we're working on that. They said maybe not physically, but remotely, that we could do that in the future. So we're working on that. So you're going to love this one, folks. March the 28th, 1870. First board meeting. Look what they approved. They approved the chairman. They approved the commissioners, a register of deeds. Clerk of Superior Court, Sheriff, man, they could not get out of that room without a tax. Look at it. Put a tax on liquor. Very first board meeting. Very first, back in 1870. My God, I thought we had prohibition back then and we didn't have liquor uh, back then. Maybe it was, um, 
Maybe they're selling moonshine in there somewhere. I don't know. Manio Town Commons. Most of y'all are aware that our board worked with the Manio Preservation Trust since 19, uh, 2015 to try to find a buyer for that historic property. But the repairs were, were just too much. A lot of asbestos, a lot of stuff going on in there. So after, after four years, we said, look, uh, we, we, nobody's going to buy this property. So we're going to work with the town of Manio and create a town commons. And look how beautiful that is after all those four buildings. We've tore down, uh, in October, we tore down four buildings. And we got a nice green space there now. We're working with uh, the town of Manio uh, to create a, a town commons. We authorized, we, we did a lease agreement with them. We're tweaking it a little bit. And um, the county manager, uh, where is, where is um, the town manager Manio? I saw him in here earlier. Where is, there he is, all the way in the back. Come on up front. You, you, no, you. <laughs> Bobby's working with him and, and their board. We're tweaking this, and we hope to finalize that soon. Th this will be great. This will be great. Take a look at the waterfront in 1894. Man, walk on that boardwalk in, Man in Manio now compared to that thing right there. My word. It's nice. The waterfront in Manio is awesome. Here's one of the courthouse, 1904. Let me make no mistake about this next topic. Our board is highly opposed to offshore drilling, seismic testing off our coast. Every single mayor... Every single governor, all the way from Maine, all the way down, bipartisan, by the way, Republicans and Democrats, are highly opposed to offshore drilling and seismic testing. This is our economic engine. We will continue to fight it. We will do everything humanly possible to stop it. The mayor of Nags Head, Ben Cahoon, myself, a number of months ago, held, we hosted, pay your bill, Bobby. I know, right? Um, <laughs> we hosted mayors from 13 counties and communities and had a roundtop discussion about the uh, proposed offshore oil and gas and how we could go about to an opposition to, to create opposition to this and, and fight it. Um, the board, six resolutions our board has passed. Six resolutions in opposition to offshore drilling. I have personally been to Raleigh for rallies and spoke against offshore drilling. I've made it clear to the President of the United States of America that I am personally opposed and our board's personally opposed to offshore drilling. In spite of what may have occurred recently with NEPA, I am opposed, and our board is strictly opposed to offshore drilling. Trying to get Tillis's office on board, Trey. Thank you for setting this up. We did this. We talked to his staff this past summer, and we took his Tom Tillis's staff um, um, on a tour to show him what's been done in Nags Head. It's quiet. Hadn't heard much. Let's hope it stays that way. But we will continue to fight with all our effort that we have against offshore drilling. Goes back a while, guys. 1989. Malcolm, you probably attended this. 300 people in Manio attended Mobile Oil's plan to drill off our coast. They wanted, they wanted to drill some 40-some 40, 40 miles, 48 miles off our coast. Representative Jones and Bass Knight was highly opposed to it. There was an oil spill, 17 miles. Cost a half a million dollars to clean it up. You ever read about that in the paper? Heck, no you don't. 
but they even fought it back then. I'd be remiss if I wouldn't talk. I mean, how could I stand up here and do a county presentation and not talk about our weather system and our hurricanes, Tim, that we have to deal with on an annual basis? August 24, tropical wave. September 6, Cat 1, 8.35 in the morning, Hatteras Island. Top wind speed, 101 miles per hour, gusts recorded in Buxton, sustained at 90. Rainfall, 4.63 inches in Buxton, almost 3 inches in Kill Devil Hills. What did we do? Our social services and local relief organizations assisted completing projects for nearly 500 families, and that included simple yard cleanup to actual home remediation. That's what we do as a county board and, a, and, a, and social services and health and human services. Community Foundation, Lorelei, this is incredible, incredible. $285,000 in donations for victims in Dare County. This goes to families both on Hatteras Island and north of Oregon Inlet. I am proud to say, Dudley, I believe our firm gave $100,000. $100,000. Dare uh, Town Bank. Taylor, you in here? All the way in the back. Keep it coming. <laughs> Is it Wiseman? It's Winnie Wiseman. I think I'm pronouncing Winnie's name right. Our board, for so many years, we've got businesses on the causeway uh, that, you know, every year the poles get knocked down. And we had enough, so the, the, we, you know, we, we reached out to Dominion and asked Dominion to uh, do some infrastructure and power poles along the Nags Head Causeway and, and to bury these lines. And, and we wrote a letter to uh, North Carolina uh, uh, Dominion Energy asking them to look into this. And, and uh, Ms. Wiseman sent me a letter recently saying that... Um, that they're, look, they're, they're hopeful to do this and, um, and respond to our request. That's phenomenal, and we appreciate Dominion Energy for, for looking into this. <clears throat> this, um, this building here is way overdue to be replaced. Way overdue. Commissioner Ross is instrumental in bringing that to our attention over the last year or so in 2019 and so we're building in addition to COA we got a project that we're going to do in Roanoke Island right there where the dog park is now uh, we're going to build a new uh, SPCA facility that's a rendering of it 4.5 million dollars it's off of Airport Road on Roanoke Island um, really excited to do that Nags Head, Mayor Cahoon, y'all finished your maintenance project, maintenance project um, this past August. It was a, a 40, I'll show you the numbers. It was completed in August of this year. It was uh, 10 miles of shoreline, uh, Bonnet Street south of the town line. It was 4 million cubic yards of sand. $42 million project. The occupancy tax from Dare paid $12 million. Because it was an engineered beach and it was done nine years ago, FEMA reimbursed us for a portion of that to some tune cliff of $16 million. So 16, that's $28 million of the 42 that they got from the occupancy portion of Dare and, and FEMA. Once you, knock on wood, let's hit wood as much as we can when it comes to beach nourishment with FEMA, we'll hold, we'll hold our breath because as long as you got an uh, engineered beach, FEMA's going to help us with whatever we lose from a project that we put. These projects are only designed to last five years, folks. 
they redid this. They did just did the maintenance nine years later. So let's hope Kitty Hawk, Southern Shores, Kill Devil Hills, Duck, we hope those projects, Don, don't be coming to us and asking for some money here. But let's hope they last as long as Nags Head did. That's incredible. Incredible. Uh, let me back up. Nothing's any prettier. Than, look at that width of that beach, 300 feet. I mean, that, 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 I mean, you don't get any better than that. Buxton, we've got um, um, that project coming on sooner because we've got to take advantage of the FEMA money. So we're looking at 21, 22 for that project. And that's going to be about a $20 million project. We're ho also hoping to restore uh, one, to, one, one to three growings down that way to help protect that as well. Uh, and we received funds from FEMA. Sand loss, I believe, Dave, what are we, about seven to eight million dollars that we're going to get towards that 19 to, to, re, to um, re, do maintenance in Buxton. I mean, that's huge. Last year, first time, we went live. We went live, stream live on June 3rd for our board meetings. We broadcast on channel 191, current TV channel, and believe it or not, you can get it on your phone. I mean, I don't know any kid that wouldn't uh, um, love that. <laughs> Jiminy Christmas. I asked mine to write a letter, and they said, I can't write a letter, paper and pencil? Are you kidding me? I can type you something. I can, I can text you hind parts, but I can't write nothing. So, but yeah, we laugh. We laugh. Now, this Porter John in uh, Harris, um, uh, outhouse, oh, excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm just teasing with you guys. 1900, uh, Fettison, Richard Fettison, it's a uh, wireless station in Buxton, broadcast for the first time uh, by radio. It was, it was musical notes, of course, but it went for 48 miles north of Buxton all the way to Roanoke Island. So that's, uh, that's our history when it comes to, uh, they didn't have paper cup and string. They actually had uh, wireless. Let's take a year in review, 2019. I'll try to go through these quick. I hope I'm not boring you guys. Um, we celebrated 10 year anniversary at the uh, Dare, Dare Center. 21,911 calls. Where's Trey? His, his, his folks do a phenomenal job over there in Mania. EMS responded to 9,000, almost 10,000 incidents uh, requests. 359 were life-saving med missions. Life-saving med, med missions, 359. That's almost one, a, that's more than one a day. That's incredible, incredible. We had 262 unanimous votes taken by the Board of Commissioners. We're a bipartisan board. We have 44 public comments in Manio. We had 30 in Buxton. We had 12 public hearings with 29 comments. Shana, 28,000 tons of garbage, trash, by Public Works picked up. That's a lot of trash, folks. That's a lot of trash. Unbelievable job. I mean, these guys, these guys, get out of their truck to get cans for, for their citizens. It's incredible. I love this next photo. Uh, Tim's not here, but I just love this photo. 4,300 participants in our Parks and Recs program. I mean, these kids are phenomenal. It's, it's phenomenal what we do and what we provide for our kids in Dare County. I love that picture. 2,004 items were borrowed from the Dare County libraries last year. 1,500 uh, uh, food and lodging and institutional inspections were done by our Health and Human uh, Services Department, Environmental Health Services. That's a lot of inspections. They're mandatory for a lot of our businesses. All those were done last year. Now, I would not want to have this gas bill that the sheriff has. <laughs> 1.2 million miles? My word. I would not want to have that gas bill. But unbelievable, 
what the sheriff's department does for our citizens of Dare County. They're on the scene constantly, all the time traveling. Doug, I can't thank you for what you do in your department for our citizens. It's incredible. Thank you for what you do. 8,500 community maps viewed on our website. 253,000 in GIS parcels on our map site. 112 permits were issued for construction of dwellings. That's almost, that's two a week. On the job, the, if you haven't seen one of these, go online and look at these videos. It talks about on the job and what our uh, employees do. And we're doing it from different departments. They're really, really educational and they're great, great videos. Um, 100, uh, 886 marriage licenses were issued from our Register of Deeds. Look at these numbers for our veterans. This is impressive. 255 meetings and 760 phone calls. 2,200 immunizations from our Health and uh, Human Services Department. We actually uh, have fraud protection from our Register of Deeds office. We have e-billing online, payments, tax department, go green. Now, they're not doing it now, but come spring, if you want a duck donut, sign up on our website here, and you go buy duck donut, and they'll give you a free donut. I tried to have some here this morning, but Dorothy let me know that they weren't open this time of year. So, 2020, let's look ahead. Our board will continue to be committed to whatever we face in 2020. We've, we've provided $4.8 million for a five-year project to uh, automatic meter reading, unincorporated there. Once again, $14,000,000, uh, 36,000 uh, 36, plus square feet for this facility in Manio to educate our kids. Appointments not required. Register deeds. Cheryl, thank you for making that happen. You don't have to go to the post office now set an appointment, then, set, then go back and take you, get your picture done, fill out all that stuff. Cheryl was instrumental in pushing this in her department. And you can come in anytime, no appointment, show up and get your uh, passport. Drew, Drew was responsible for helping us get some installation of poles, 20 poles in the different towns and unincorporated there to uh, show the storm surge throughout the county. Those, those are critical. Um, our, uh, Mr. Cofield, James is here this morning. Please, this is huge for us. We're talking about federal dollars, aren't we, James? Absolutely. This is incredible. He's responsible. He's going all around, all over the uh, district uh, saying, please, please uh, be counted in the census this year. This helps us with federal funds. Do not overlook this, folks. Do not overlook this. Notices are mailed in February on our tax appraisal. By law, we're required to do this every eight years, and the last time we did a, a reval was in 20, 2012, so we're doing that uh, this year. Uh, our flood maps have finally, God knows, how many years now, finally have been approved. They're coming on board in, in June. I warn you that the statistics and the work that they did did not include uh, Hermine and Michael. That's when we had a lot of damage, folks. A lot of damage. I, I encourage you, when you, when you're, when you put in a le lesser class of flood, please do not do away with your flood insurance. Low risk does not necessarily mean no risk. DHS expansion, those buildings are old over there. It's time we work on that. We're going to expand those. We're going to have one door that you walk into and you can access a Health and Human Services or the uh, Health Department. Just a common entryway. That's going to be a great project once that's completed. Folks, Dare County is financially strong extremely strong. We maintain an A-plus bond rating, which allows us to get the lowest interest rate 
that we can, hear, that we can get on the market to be able to do our, our growth and our buildings. We continue to exceed the targeted fund balance policy requirements. We're at 27%. Rob, I believe that works out to be 29 million and some change in fund balances. That is huge. That's our rainy day fund. We approved the fiscal year budget. We did not uh, increase your taxes. We did not do that last year. We are the ninth lowest property tax rate in the entire state of North Carolina, 47 cent, the lowest rate. We have established a capital improvement fund with our consultants. They told us that we needed to do this. It's for large projects that exceed 50,000 plus, which would be our um, COA expansion, purchasing vehicles, et cetera. So it's similar to a savings account. Uh, it's uh, implemented debt affordability model. It's planning over long periods of time to approve your ability for unforeseen events in the county. Here's our top expenditures. I'll just give you the top three. Public safety, 29% of our budget goes, goes to public safety. 23% of our budget goes to education. Human services, 16%. I'll try to uh, conclude here with some, uh, with some comments about um, you know, what we've accomplished since 1870. I mean, I, I could not be more proud of our board and what we did in, in uh, 2019. You know, I'm confident we'll uh, work together very, very close in 2020 to tackle whatever comes our way. One thing that's known in Dare County government would be um, we're here to help you. I'd be remiss, and I've got to pick this sheet up because I, I don't want to uh, forget anyone. We have the best relationships that I can think of throughout this state. And I've been to Raleigh quite a bit, and I've been to other counties quite a bit because I go to the um, NACO meetings and I meet other senators, I mean other uh, commissioners. I cannot thank our elected officials of our six municipalities, what talented staffs that they have and what they do and what they accomplish on a daily basis is, is just uh, uh, remarkable. I could not be more proud of the relationship that we have with Representative Hainig and Senator Steinberg, as well as Betty Jo, Senator Burr, Trey, Senator Tillis. And Bobby and I had an opportunity to go up to Washington last week and we met with the chief of staff of uh, Murphy's office. I mean, guys, we got an ear. And we got relationships with key people in federal positions and state positions that we can pick up the phone and call and ask for help. Could that be more proud of the fact of our relationship and what our law enforcement does in all our municipalities and our sheriff and, and Sheriff Dowdy? Our fire departments. Six municipalities, our EMS department, Jenny, and what they do, our ocean rescue, um, just, just unbelievable work that they do, folks. They respond. Um, our Dare County Transportation, I mentioned Alan Moran, our representative, and, and uh, Jerry Jennings. I can pick up the phone any day and call them and say, look, we, we, we need some help here, and they do it. The relationships that we have is incredible. I said this earlier, our park superintendent, Dave Hallett. Dave and I have become very, very good friends. Um, we try to go to breakfast once a month. Um, I love to go by his house on my Harley and, <laughs> and revving him. And he, he looked, he was that fool outside my front door. But Dave, what you do for us is incredible through Dare County. And we, I could not be more proud of the relationship that we have. Um, Dominion, K. Patterson Electric, Susan's all the way in the back. No young lady 
has worked any harder to make things happen on Hatteras Island, especially after that shutdown. Incredible woman, incredible board, incredible personnel. Unbelievable what they got done in a week or more. It's incredible. It's incredible. Um, our chamber, Karen's probably sitting back out here in the back. Pat, past president, unbelievable relationship we have. Listen, guys, we have taken the bull by the horn when it comes to affordable housing, essential housing. They prompted us. They helped us. They deserve the credit to what our board has done to move it forward. And I encourage our mayors that are here today and the personnel to take it to the next level and do it in the municipalities. It's incredible. All the advisory boards that serve on Dare County's advisory boards, the town's advisory boards, everybody out here, that, that um, thank you for what you do. Um, you know, Artie's here from the, um, uh, the um, COA board. Clark Twitty's here on the state board of community colleges. The work that he does is incredible. Taylor Suggs is on the foundation for COA. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's, it's phenomenal. W what, uh, Reed, where's Reed? I saw Reed earlier. Reed serves on that board with me. Um, it, it, it's just incredible. And then the network of nonprofit community organizations, Lorelei, uh, just the network of those, uh, of those folks is, is, is incredible. We're blessed. I'm blessed. I could not be more proud to represent this county on the Dare County Board of Commissioners. I am humbled, folks, by this. I am truly humbled. Coming down here in 1955 with my parents, crossing that rickety wooden bridge, never in my wildest dream would I ever think that Bob Woodard would be chairman of the Business Bureau, serve 14 years as a commissioner in Kill Devil Hills, the last seven years as a commissioner on the Dare County Board of Commissioners, be appointed as a trustee to the College of the Albemarle? Folks, I'm, I'm humble. I am so truly blessed and humble to be able to work for you and help this county grow and be the county that it is. Every single one of you in this room today, every single one of you, bipartisan, be it Democrat, be it Republican, every single one of you is a crucial part to the success of Dare County. Every single one of you. I could not be more pleased. I could not be more proud. I could not be more honored. With that being said, I don't want you to stand up. I want you to grab the hand of the person next to you. Do that for me. Grab the hand of the person next to you. All right, all right, hey, wait a minute. Don't get carried away here. That, that ain't where I'm going with this. That ain't where I'm going with this. Look to the person at your left and say thank you for what you do for Dare County. Now, now, now look, now look to your right. Now look to the person at the right and say, I look forward to working with you in 2020. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you.